Hello there and welcome back to this channel. I hope you're doing well. This channel really is dedicated to you if you're a home studio owner, maybe you're a bassist like myself or a musician, then I think there's uh, hopefully enough videos here to help you along. This particular video is about the approach to uh, a bass recording session. So funny enough, I'm playing two roles really. I'm playing the role of the producer and engineer and also the bassist. But really I want to uh, show the dynamic between you know, the bass player coming into a studio, what equipment should he bring, what kind of things should he have found out, what preparation should he have, should he have made, but also the setup in a recording studio and that dynamic of pressing the record button. I really hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and I'd love to hear your comments. Just as a point, I'm going to be doing this video in two parts. So this first part really is about the setup and the planning, and then there'll be a second video, which will be the actual live recording. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do is just take you through the Logic song in a minute, maybe take you through the verses and the choruses. I have made some notes, so uh, I can take you through my notes as well. But before we do that, I thought I'd just take you through my approach. I guess my first tip is just be professional, you know, turn up on time, be courteous, you know, be friendly, be open, not only with the artist, the producer, the studio engineer, maybe with other band members that uh, you're recording uh, this song with. You know, ultimately the, the client or the artist is probably very nervous. So, you know, be encouraging, provide encouraging words. But, you know, just be professional, you know, be on your A game and you kind of bring in your, uh, you know, your creative creativity to the song. I know tip number two may be strange, but tip number two, have a good night's sleep the night before. Be hydrated, have some breakfast. So, you know, if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling, you know, you've come into the session on an empty stomach, likely you're not going to be in the best kind of place. So bring your A game. Make sure, again, make sure you're kind of fully fit for the uh, for the session. OK, so for tip number three, try and get into some early contact with the producer. I guess in the scenario of a, home, of a home studio, the producer may also be the artist. But, you know, the producer may be able to provide chord charts, maybe be able to provide a reference track. Even if it's uh, the uh, the singer with a guitar player or maybe the singer with a piano player. No, it's all going to help you uh, prepare for the actual recording session. Gives will give you a sense of the genre for the actual song. You know, if you've got to make your own chord charts up, again, a basic reference track uh, from the producer or artist is going to help you. Maybe have a chat with the uh, artist or and producer. Get a sense of what is the general genre and flavour of this particular song. I know I've had... Uh, uh, studios produce me uh, chord charts. That's not always going to happen. I think in one instance, I actually provided a, a session basis. I employed some uh, some flavour of different kind of lines for each kind of song. But I guess really what I'm trying to say is make early contact with the uh, producer and just ask some kind of questions. That's This is going to help you be prepared for the actual recording day. OK, so for tip number four, uh, just staying on this theme of being prepared. Just make sure all your equipment works well. Make sure your pedal boards, if you're going to take your pedal board, all kind of works. There isn't any broken leads. You know, I always double up on leads that I'll take uh, to a session. So, um, I'm not, if you know, if I only need two leads, I'll take four leads. You know, make sure that uh, the pedals kind of work. Make sure the battery and power packs all kind of uh uh, working for you so be prepared from it in a terms of equipment bring your tuners uh, you know i bring a di i've got a spare set of strings i've got spare leads also i take along manuscript uh, paper with me just in case i need to take notes but more often these days beforehand this is you know a little bit with regard to point the previous point really i've mapped out the song on my ipad I've kind of got a bit of a flavour of, you know, the order of the song. You know, I've got a basic chord structure for the song. Maybe some little notes in terms of uh, uh, possibilities where there may be dropouts, maybe areas for uh, fills if needed. So again, be prepared, come fully prepared with the bases all working, good strings on the bases, all leads working, equipment working well. OK, so for tip number five, just be efficient with your time. You know, on recording day, it could be that, uh, like myself, you're recording in, in a home studio environment. You're not going to have all the luxuries of a big studio. If 
fundamentally, my bedroom studio, you've got a small space to set up. It is big enough for a, a guitarist or a bass player. You know, just be efficient with your time. You know, I'll show you where you need to set up your pedal boards. I'll give you power. Just set up in double quick time. Make sure you're all tuned so we can actually carry on with the uh, recording session. If you've got the luxury of a big studio, maybe things may be slightly different. But really, this whole video or this uh, channel is dedicated to the home studio owner so it could be like it could be very likely that you are recording in a home studio environment like primarily i am and what i have been doing in other kind of people's studios so uh, again tip number five just be efficient with your time set up double quick time get yourself tuned up no fiddling when playing bass licks to try and improve so you're all ready for the recording okay so for tip number six if you can, and this is going to be easier in a home studio environment, see if you can walk through the song within the door. Uh, in the scenario that you're going to see, the song had programmed drums. So uh, the ability just to open up the uh, MIDI file, get a sense of where the kick patterns are, it's going to help me lock into the kick. Also, uh, depending on the, the song and how advanced the song is, in this scenario, there are guitars that have been recorded, there are vocals and backing vocals. Ultimately, that's going to give me a sense for my notes where to play a little bit busier or maybe just a kind of step back. I guess in the scenario with a live drummer, which I've been uh, in this situation in a home studio, again, have a conversation with the drummer. You know, where is he going to be busy? Uh, where is he going to maybe uh, sit back a little bit? Ultimately, you want to be locked into the drums. So either have a conversation with the drummer, take some notes, or maybe if you get the ability, have a look at the door, open up the MIDI files and just get a sense of where the kick patterns are that may help you. Just be well rehearsed, be well practiced. Hopefully before recording day, you've had a dialogue with the artist, you've had a, you've had a dialogue with the producer, uh, you've been able to pull together chord charts, de develop up your own, take your notes. Uh, maybe you've been given reference tracks to listen to, so you've got a sense of the genre. Hopefully you've been given a basic uh, track for, of the song by the artist. So again, there's no excuses not coming to uh, the session well rehearsed. What I try to do is, uh, uh, on recording days, maybe do one or two passes. I'll just play pretty basic, pretty straight, and uh, then ask the producer, look, is there anything else that you want me to do? Maybe you want me to drop in a fill somewhere, maybe from a uh, verse into a chorus or into a build, you know. Um, if I'm well rehearsed, if I know the song, I'm going to be able to do those things a lot more easier. So I guess for tip number seven, be well practiced, be well rehearsed. OK, so for my final tip, just serve the song, serve the artist, you know, serve the producer. Ultimately, they know what the role of the basis is going to be for their track. And, you know, you should too. You know, ultimately keep it solid, keep it tight. You know, if they ask you to be creative, ask you to try some stuff out, great, then you can express yourself. But fundamentally, just keep it tight and serve the song. OK, so that's all my tips. I've probably missed something, but please give me a comment below. Is there something I've missed? Is there something else we can learn from? Is there something I can learn from? I'd love to hear your comments. OK, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to take you through the logic file. So let's just go to logic now and I can show you the song. OK, in this section, uh, just the vocals and the rose piano. I'm not going to play bass in this section at all. Voices worshipping in harmony Singing holy, holy, holy As I stand in awe of you OK, fill into verse 2. My option here really is I probably am not going to play, to be honest. Um, there is one more option, just to pedal an E in this section. Or I may get a synth piano to do much the same thing, just to hold an E note. Okay, next section, we've got a little fill. We're coming into the first chorus. I think I'm just going to follow the first two beats of the kick drum in this one. Just keep it very open. Okay, we're moving into the verse number three. 
place We come together and we lift up praise Yeah, help us celebrate Victory emanating A lot of, a lot of higher, higher, higher the bass in this section I do want to accentuate that vocal you though You make your speechless as we stand in awe of you Okay, into our big chorus Just groove that turn with the drum, just groove that kick beat. What else can I There's a lot of things going on in this section, so I don't need to be too busy. Just going to go to the final section because the, uh, there's a little drop down we don't need to go through. Again, more vocals coming in there's here. Nothing I can do. Electric guitar is going to slide now, but again, quite busy in the back here. Kick's quite busy, so I'm going to stick with that kick and try and take that away. Maybe this is going to be slow. There's a little piano section doing something. Okay, so that wraps it up for this video. Um, there's going to be another video coming very soon, which is actually going to be the bass recording. So please don't forget to subscribe, click that bell icon, give us a like, and I'd love to hear your comments. You know, how would you approach uh, playing bass on this particular track? I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas. Again, and finally, just keep safe and well, and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.